Today we'll learn about WebSockets and how they allow you to add real-time features to your applications. Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today I will provide an introduction to WebSockets, and I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students, and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. Today we're going to set up a simple mono repo featuring a front-end application that communicates with the server using WebSockets. So what are WebSockets? Well, you can picture a WebSocket connection like a phone call. I'm here on Google Images, and there's many different images explaining WebSockets. You can see that's just what I searched for. I'm just using the Wikipedia image that you see here. And you can see it starts with a handshake between the client and the server. After that, bi-directional messages are open and persistent. So it's a lot like a phone call compared to when we have that request response interaction with HTTP that you're probably used to. This allows bi-directional communication and that makes WebSockets very useful for applications that need to broadcast immediate updates. So for example, a chat application is a common application where real-time bi-directional data flow is needed. For today's project, you will need to have Node.js installed. If you don't have it currently installed, go to nodejs.org that you see up here in my browser bar, and you'll want to download the LTS version, whatever's recommended for most users currently. If you're watching this at a future date, it may be a higher number than you have right there. Now I've got VS Code open for my code editor, and I'm going to open a terminal window to start out with control and the back tick. And note that I'm in an empty folder that I've created on my computer named WS-1. You could create a folder and name it whatever you want to, but just start out with an empty folder today and then open that folder in VS Code. And then once you open a terminal window, you want to check to see if you have Node installed. So I'm going to type Node-V to check my version. And you can see I currently have version 18.15.0. I think I just saw the latest was 18.17 as of the making of this video. I'll probably upgrade soon, but maybe you are watching this in the future and have a newer version. That is fine too. Just make sure you have Node installed and it tells you some version there. And now that we're in our empty folder, let's create a couple of directories over here in the file tree. I'll just click the new directory icon and I'll name the first one server because we're going to have two different projects going in this mono repo. We're going to have a server and then we're also going to have a front end application. So I'll create another directory and name it app. And now let's once again open a terminal window. I press control and the back tick to do that. And after I have done that, I'm going to CD in to the server directory. So I need to type CD and then dot slash server. You could probably also just type server. Either way, you want to make sure you're now in the folder that you named. I named mine WS-1 and then server. So I'm inside the server directory here in my terminal window and I want to initialize the project with Node Package Manager. And to do that, I type npm and if you installed Node, you should also have Node Package Manager installed. And then you want init and I'm going to type dash y so it doesn't ask me questions. It will just automatically create everything without the questions. I'll press enter, and here you can see the contents of the package JSON that it just created. So I'm going to close the terminal window once again. Let's open the server directory, and now we see a package JSON file in here, and it has those contents. Now we need to use the node package WS today, and you can see that's a Node.js WebSocket library, and to install it, we just type npm i WS. So let's go back to VS Code and do that. Back in VS Code, I'm going to open the terminal with control backtick one more time, type npm i WS to add that WS dependency, which is WebSockets for Node. Now I'll close this and we'll verify that we have it listed in dependencies here in our package JSON. Now let's just make a couple of more changes here. I'm going to change the name to WS-1, as this is the first video of my WebSocket series. And then under scripts, I want a start script. So I'm going to change this to start and I'll change the contents here and it's just going to be node and then a period. So this will launch our application when I type npm start. And we're now ready to create our basic Node.js server for WebSockets. So let's create a new file, once again in the server directory. This is index.js. 
Now inside this file, let's start by defining WS, and there we need to require WS. And that's that module we just installed as a dependency for WebSockets. Now let's define our server, and that's going to equal a new WS.server. And then inside of this, we need to go ahead and pass an object that has the port we want to run the server on. We're going to run this on port 3000 today. Now, after that, let's go ahead and use that server. So we'll say server.on. And once we have a connection established with WebSockets, then we'll be essentially listening for this socket. And then we come over with a function. And inside this function, here is where we actually list, listen for a message, I should say. So we have socket.on. And then we're listening for a message. And after that, we'll take that message once again with a function. And now inside of here, we can just say socket.send and let's send that same message back. So I'm going to use a template literal, and just pass in the value of message. So whatever the server receives, it's just going to essentially echo and send it back to whoever sent it. And one other thing I wanna do in here, just so we can come back and visit this, is to go ahead and log that message. And you might be surprised how the message logs on the server. So we'll take a look at that as well. And it was that simple to create our basic WebSocket server. So now let's look at the front end app. I'll go ahead and let the server directory collapse here. And it looks like I didn't get the index.js file in there. This needs to be inside that server directory. There we go. So now it's all in the server directory. I'm glad I looked at that. And now inside the app directory here, we need to create some files. We'll start with an index.html file. And now with VS Code, we can type an exclamation mark, which is an Emmet abbreviation. And you can see I have got some help here showing what it's going to create. So I'm going to press tab and it instantly gives me this outline, the skeleton of an HTML document. I'm going to press Alt Z. So anything that was scrolling off the screen wraps down to the next line. Now here, I'm going to change the document title to WebSockets. And after that, we're also going to need to import some files that we will be creating. So we will create a CSS file. So this is going to be href inside of here, just style.css. I'm just going to put it in the same app directory. I'm not going to have a separate directory. I'll give this the rel style sheet here. And after that, we're also going to have a script tag. So we'll say script. And now the script is going to have the source and that's going to be the JS file we create. And that's just going to be named app.js today. And after that, I wanna also set the defer here. We could set that before or after, but that means just don't load the JavaScript until everything else is essentially loaded. Make sure we have the DOM loaded before we load the JavaScript. So that's also important. So those are the basic things we want. Now let's look at the body here and we're going to put in a simple form and then inside this form, and I don't need the action attribute that was added there quickly. So I'll just remove that. But inside of this form, I do need an input. It defaults to type text and that's exactly what I want. So placeholder here, I'm just going to set this equal to your message. And then after that input, we need a submit button. So I'll just say button and here I'll put send right there. And that's essentially all we need for the HTML, except where we're going to display the messages that we receive back from the server. They'll go inside an unordered list and we'll create those list items with our JavaScript. So we don't need to add any more there. That is all we need for our HTML file, but we do need to create these files that we are referencing here as well. So let's start with that style.css. And I'm just going to paste in some basic CSS here. This is available in the GitHub repo that's linked in the description. Of course, you can add your own CSS. This is not a CSS tutorial and you'll see the functionality with or without this CSS. But what I have here is applying a font size of one and a half rem to everything on the page that would have font. And I did it this way because if not, you would also have to apply it separately 
to the input and the button as well as the body. So I just dropped it here in the top. Got some basic colors and padding there for the body. Here is the form that's display flex. Here is the unordered list that's display flex. And then here's the input and the button with a little bit of border radius and padding as well. That's all the CSS there is. Now let's go ahead and create that app js where we can talk about web sockets so we're going to start this file by defining socket and we'll set this equal to a new web socket which is a capital w and a capital s on the client side now of course this is all for the browser now this starts out ws colon slash slash and we'll have local host here in our development environment then we said the server was going to be on port 3000 so we need to say that as well after that, let's define a function called send message. So we'll say send message and send message might receive an event. So let's go ahead and put the E there for the event. And now I'll say E dot prevent default because we might submit a form that has our message and then we don't want to reload the page. And that's what this E dot prevent default allows us to do is actually submit the form without reloading the page. Now let's define the input inside of this function. So we'll say input equals document dot query selector. And now we'll grab that input that is in our HTML. After that, let's check for a value. So if we have the input dot value, then we can take action. We'll say socket dot send and we'll send the input dot value. And after that, we'll say input.value is going to be equal to nothing once again. So after we send it, we want to erase what's already in the input. Then after that, after the if statement as well, we'll put the focus back on the input. And so that is our function. Now we'll use that function a couple of times because we'll say document.querySelector and then we'll select the button. So that's the submit button of the form. And if it gets clicked, of course, it would submit the form as well. So we don't really need to select the button. We could just select the form. Let's do that. And now after we get the form, I'll just break this down to the next line. But notice I'm not adding a space. I just don't want it to wrap down awkwardly. So I can do this and say dot and it will still apply. So add event listener. And after that, we're listening for the submit event of the form, and we want to call our send message function. So remember, when we click the send button or just we press enter inside of that input, it should submit the form and it will call this send message function. Okay, after that, now we need to listen for messages that we may receive from the server. So I'm going to indicate that here when I say listen for messages. So you know where we're breaking apart the logic. And now as we listen, we'll say socket.addEventListener and we're listening for a message. And if we get a message, it's an event object, but we can destructure that here and you get the event.data. So we'll just destructure that to data right here. Then we'll use an arrow here for our function. And now inside the function, I'll scroll for just a little room because this is going to get a little longer. Let's say const li, which is our list item. Let's set that equal to document.create element. And we're creating a list item. After we've created that, we can say li.text content. And that's what I want right there. Let's set that equal to the data, which is essentially the message from the server. Then we can say document.query selector. And let's select that unordered list. And now let's append child and we'll append the list item that we have created. And that's really all we should need here for our client JavaScript to go ahead and be able to send messages from the form and to receive messages back from the server and display those as list items. And I'll save that. And I noticed I didn't save that style.css, so I'll save that as well. Looks like our front end app is all ready to go as well. And now we need to run the applications. Well, to do that, we want to start the server first, and we don't really need to look at these files. I could, of course, display those as well. But what we do need to do is open that terminal again, and we should still be in the server directory down here in the terminal, and we are. So we can just type our npm start that we added for that script, and it should start the server up. So we see the node period that was indicated from the npm start, and that server should now be running. So now that it is, we want to start our front end application. Now to do that, I usually use live server 
to launch a web application. If you don't have that extension installed, let's search for it really quick. So you can see this over here, live server, and we should find it here. Here it is by Ritwick Day. I've got this enabled right here, lots of downloads. So if you don't have this extension, you might wanna get that to go ahead and be able to launch your front end application here in dev mode. Now to do that, we wanna to go to the HTML file. I can close this. But now I'm going to just right click here and I should be able to choose open with live server. You can see you can also make a shortcut to do that with Alt L, Alt O, or you can click go live down here as well. Any of that should start this application with live server. I'm just going to choose open with live server there. And now we'll go to the browser and here is our application. It's not a lot to look at, but we have our input and we have our submit button. And after we send, we should receive that message back from the server. So let's check it out. I'm just going to say, hey, click send. And here we received it back already from the server and we got, hey. So now let's go back to VS Code and check the server message and see what we're getting there. Because remember, we logged that server message here in the index on line six. So control and the back tick to open this up. Notice it's a buffer message here. When we send something, and then we log it on the server, we get a buffer message. So what if you want to actually read that message in a console log on the server as well? Well, we need to work with a buffer just a little bit. So let's change what we have here. I'll say const b for buffer equals buffer.from, and I'll pass in the message. Now after that, we're not quite finished. So now we need to console.log b, but then also say dot to string. And now we should actually log out the message here in the console as well. So let's go back to the browser and we'll send another message. Of course, since we saved anything, uh, live server, that extension will relaunch the application when it notices any type of change. So that's probably what happened here, but I'll say, hey, once again, send that. And now we've got hey here. Let's go back and look in the terminal window. And, and we've still got buffer. What I need to do is actually stop the server. So control C to stop, type npm start. So those changes take place. I'm not using nodemon. If you're familiar with nodemon, it will apply the changes right away and restart the server, server for you. I didn't do that today, so I needed to restart that server. Now we should see the change take place. So let's once again, I'll reload the app here. And let's type a different message like Dave. And now let's see what we get when we look back at VS Code. And now Dave was actually logged here to the terminal as well. So just know this message will display as a buffer unless you know how to read from the buffer here on the server. So we've, what we've got here is a mono repo. This is all server side, Node.js. And over here, this is the client front end application with HTML, CSS, and just vanilla JavaScript today. So before we're finished today, I'm going to launch another instance of the front end application only in a second browser window and let's check it out. Okay, I've got two instances of the front end application running. Here's the one that was already running. We can type, hey, here. We get that message there, but if we type something else over here like app two, we get that message here. Notice they're not broadcasting to each other. The server is communicating just like that phone call analogy I was talking about. It's just between this application and the server. It's not emitting those messages or broadcasting that to everyone like say Discord would in a chat application when I would type something here like I need pizza. Everybody should know I need pizza, but instead it's just sending it back to me and not over here. So in the next tutorial in this series, we're going to look at how we can do that and how Socket IO makes it very easy to accomplish. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day. Let's write more code together very soon.